Just to give you a sense of scale, here it is on the printer. And although this part is massive, it only took 20 hours to print. Alright, and here's all the parts I'm going to install on my Ender 3 V2. Everything on the right side is part of the fan upgrade. So these are silent fans and will help the machine run almost completely quiet. And everything on the left is part of the hot end upgrade. I'm going to be installing this V2 style hot end and this volcano heat block. And that'll help me run larger nozzles so I can print even faster. I've already installed some upgraded feet. I had to hammer these in place, but the good news is they're probably not going to go anywhere. These feet are actually squash balls, and they're the least bouncy balls you've ever seen. So these feet act as dampers, and they cut out a lot of the vibration from the machine, which makes it run quieter. Just like the video I made on upgrading my Ender 3 Pro's fans, I'm going to be using Noctua's. But since they're 12 volts and the power supply on the Ender 3 V2 is a 24 volt power supply, I'm going to need to use this step-down converter. Although there's cheaper alternatives on the market, I choose Noctua's because they're quiet, reliable, and they come with a bunch of adapters and extension cords that'll come in handy when I'm trying to wire them up to my machine. I'm going to be installing this V6 style hot end onto the machine. It comes assembled and set up to run on a 12 volt machine. But my Ender 3 is a 24 volt machine, so I'm going to need to keep that in mind when I'm wiring everything up. It also comes with all of these accessories and extras. Included with that purchase was a couple of spare heat brakes, extra nozzles for 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0.5 millimeters. But what I'm really excited about is that it came with everything I need to run a volcano style hot end. So here's my volcano heater block and extra volcano style nozzles. So it comes with a 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1.0, and 1.2 millimeter diameter nozzle. I also had to buy this machined aluminum hot end mount. So this one's from Clemco. It came really nicely packaged inside of this felt bag. And it comes with instructions and this little piece of glass that's supposed to help you set up the right spacing when you install it. The parts are nicely machined and anodized and I think it'll look great on my printer. And it's made in the USA. I'm going to start by changing out the hot end because I think that job will be a little more complicated and it'll affect how I install the fans. Looks like there's just two screws in the back that I need to take out. So this plastic part is holding both of the fans and the rest of these wires are going to the hot end. There could be a way to just install this volcano hot end and not do all the rest of the modifications I'm about to do. But I'm just going to replace the whole thing because I have all the parts to do it. Alright, so now I'm going to watch Clemco's instructions that they link to in their packaging. Clemco, keep it classy. Alright, so it looks like I just mount it on like this. So I manually adjusted the z-axis by rotating the lead screw and I got it to its home position. Now I'll set this on top of the spacer which should set it to approximately the right height for a volcano hot end. Now I'll just tighten these down. Since this came pre-installed with the standard heating block, I'm going to need to uninstall it so I can put the volcano heating block on there. So I'll just unscrew the top. Oh, this is interesting. So the spare heat brakes that they included are PTFE lined, but the one that they came that was pre-assembled is an all-metal heat brake. So this will allow me to print higher temperature plastics. I think I'll go with this one. So I'll just thread this all-metal heat brake into the volcano heater block. And then in the other end, I'll put my volcano nozzle. I'm going to start with the 0.6 millimeter nozzle. So I'll just screw this in. So I'll just get this finger tight. Once this machine's all put together, I'll do a hot tightening on this where I heat the hot end up and then put a little torque on there to get it seated nicely. Make sure to leave enough threads at the bottom so that I can do a hot tightening. I'm going to need to reuse this 24 volt heating cartridge. So I'm going to uninstall it from my old heating block and put it in the new one. It's held in place with a set screw on the bottom. 
I'm also going to salvage the thermistor, which is held in place with this screw. And this wasn't on there very tight, so I'm going to keep that in mind when I install it onto the Volcano hot end. I'll also remove the Bowden tube now. So I'll just leave this little bit of filament in there, it's kind of funny. I won't be reusing either of these fans, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut them. Now I'll insert the heating cartridge. Now I'll put the thermistor in this little hole. And just like with the old mounting screw, I'm just going to lightly tighten it. Now I'll thread my V6 heatsink onto here. Now I'll install the V6 hot end into the new mount. Now I'll reinstall the Bowden tube. And one thing that I always do when I'm installing my Bowden tube is I'll loosen the fitting a little bit and push this all the way down and then tighten the fitting. And that'll take up some of the slack in your Bowden tube. So with the new hot end installed, I'm going to switch gears and start putting all of my new fans on. Alright, so I just got my DC to DC voltage converter. And this will convert from 24 volts from the power supply to 12 volts that I need to run the fans. And I can adjust that with this little screw here. I'm going to salvage one of these Noctua fan plugs off of this low noise adapter. I'll cover this in shrink wrap just to prevent it from shorting out on this metal case. And I'll use a piece of 3M tape so that it doesn't move around. So I did the same mod in my last video, but basically I'm just stripping these holes out so that I can install it on top of the pre-existing fan on the power supply. You could also do this with a drill bit, but it's just faster and easier to use the screws that you already have. So I just got this fan installed. If you want to know why I installed it like that, check out my other video where I do the same mod to my Ender 3 Pro. I go through a little bit more detail about why I put this here. Before I plug my fan in, I need to check the voltage of my DC to DC power converter. Alright, and we're down to 12 volts. Okay, now that we've verified that the DC to DC voltage converter is working, I'm going to wire the rest of the fans up. And I'm going to do the same mod where I replace the motherboard fan with this larger Noctua fan. Always remember to use safety glasses when you're dealing with equipment like this. It's kind of hard to see in here, but I also want to take these two wires out. So I just unscrew those terminal blocks and pull those wires. These two wires I pulled out go through the wiring harness out to the hot end. And this actually powers the hot end heatsink fan. The stock heatsink fan on the Ender 3 is a 24 volt fan. And since I got rid of it and replaced it with a 12 volt fan, I'm going to need to plug this into my 12 volt system. So now I'm going to use a combination of these two splitter cables and this extension cable to wire up the rest of my 12 volt fans. I got some of these crimp connectors with some of my other Noctua fans. They're part of the OmniJoin cable kit. I think all I need to do is feed both ends of the wire and then squeeze. Whoa! It shot out some liquid. That was, that was pretty cool. So I'm guessing that just connects those two together. We'll see if I did that right when we power it on. So now this Y cable is powering the heatsink fan through these two cables that go through the wiring harness. 
and it'll also power the motherboard fan. Then I'll use an extension cable down here that'll go around back. So now I have this extension cable that I can plug into this Y cable and this fan here. And then this Y cable will get power from the 12 volt adapter. So that should power all the fans in my Ender 3 V2. Let's turn it on and see if that worked out how we planned. All right, so here's the moment of truth. I've got everything plugged in. I've got my power supply fan over here. I've got the heat sink fan. And I've got the motherboard fan down here. Oh, I forgot to wire this one in. Oh shit. Oof. I accidentally shorted those two wires together. Uh, good thing this thing has overcurrent protection. So I just connected this heat sink fan up. Now all my fans are spinning. I'm going to put this back together and tidy the wires up. We'll do a test print. Right now I'm going to do the hot tightening on this nozzle. So I'm going to preheat the nozzle to 230 degrees and then tighten it up. Oh shit. Uh... Okay, so that wasn't good. All right, I don't know what that was about. I can't tell where the smoke was coming from. My best guess is this fan was too close to the hot block and it started to burn a little bit. So I'll take that off and we'll try to get up to temperature again. Now we're going up to 230. Something is smoking. Well, maybe that's normal. Just the machine oil burning off from when this thing was first manufactured. Alright, so now we're up to 230 degrees. And now I will hot tighten this nozzle. In order to straighten the nozzle out, I'm going to loosen this up. Rotate the nozzle back. Tighten that down. And tighten the nozzle a little bit more. So now I'll put this fan back on. With that, I will get to the printing. I'm going to have a little competition between my Ender 3 V2 with the Volcano Hot End and my Ender 3 Pro. I've been running both of my Ender 3s with 0.4 millimeter nozzles for a while, so I'm pretty familiar with how fast I can go. And I've got my fastest profile on this machine right now. And this is my first print with the Volcano, so I kind of increased the speed by about two times. And we'll see if it can keep up. I've preheated both machines to preheat PLA, and I'm going to start them both at the same time. On your mark, get set, go! Alright, let's go! Woo! Okay, I'll go ahead and speed this up so you don't have to listen to all my commentary. So we just finished up our prints. The Volcano hot end took about four hours and the old hot end took about nine hours. So we're twice as fast over here, but let's look at the print quality. Over here on the Ender 3 Pro, we have really good print quality. You can see all those lines are super consistent and clean. All right, and if we look back at the Volcano hot end, it looks like at the top here I could really use some part cooling. And towards the bottom I've got some blobs. This shorter piece turned out fine because it had plenty of time for the part to cool between layers. So I need to do some tuning to get the quality up on this Volcano hot end. But in terms of speed, it's just way faster. This is what we had, and after a little bit of tinkering, I was able to come up with this. You can see the same consistent layer lines, and this functional part fits the circuit board just like my other part does. The single most important thing to achieving this high quality second print was the addition of a part cooling fan. I never really saw the value of a part cooling fan. After all, this black part that I printed, which has almost perfect print quality, was printed entirely without part cooling. However, when you crank up your printing speed, you start running into issues where the layers beneath the layer that you're printing 
aren't solidified yet, so they kind of give way underneath the new plastic. By turning on the part cooling fan and turning it up all the way, I was able to get these much cleaner prints. So let's take a look at the part cooling fan that I installed. The fan that I'm using is a Winson brushless fan, and this is the double ball bearing version, which is more expensive and apparently much higher quality than the fluid bearing version. I'll leave a link to the double ball bearing version in the description below. It only took me about 10 minutes to wire and install one of these blower fans to use as a part cooling fan. So I think it's something that you should definitely consider adding if you're doing this upgrade. Since this is already a 24 volt fan, you don't need to worry about stepping down the voltage and you can plug it directly into the wires that were going to the original part cooling fan. I'm going to put one of these on my Ender 3 Pro as well because they work so nicely. This Klemco V6 mount adapter has threaded holes on the side that I was able to use to install this fan. So if you look here, this is just a single screw and a washer holding this blower fan in place. What's nice is, if I'm running a print and I decide that the blower fan isn't helping the print quality, I can just flip it up out of the way. I made a duct out of a single piece of Kapton tape, which directs the air from this blower directly into the print nozzle, and helps cool down what I'm printing. Where this new hot end really shines is making large parts fast. If we pan down a little here, you can see a structural part that I made out of PLA on the Volcano hot end. Just to give you a sense of scale, here it is on the printer. This thing weighed over 1.1 kilograms, so even though I started with a fresh spool of PLA, I had to change it before the print ended. And although this part is massive, it only took 20 hours to print, which might sound like a lot of time, but on my stock printer, this would have taken 3 or 4 days to print. Alright, well that's the end of this video. Make sure to like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this 3D printer content. If you have any questions or suggestions, make sure to drop them in the comments below and I'll check them out. Alright, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.